some Size point matters. in the show today. But first, let's go out to uh, visit old friend Nick Friedel. He's on the uh, he's on the line and is our <laughs> Odyssey NBA insider. Insider calls brought to you by the all new Hyundai 2024 Santa Fe, equipped for adventure, just like Nick Friedel. What's up, Nick? <laughs> Sorry. It's good to be with y'all again. I, uh, I I smile every time I hear Lucas's voice. Yeah, uh, yeah I know. It makes I, I hear Lucas. I, I hear I'm with uh, with Evan today. I mean, it is a party, and I think back to all those times <laughs> I was in there with you. So it's good. Well, let me start out this way. Um, I mean, we're we're kind of catching up today. Warriors, they're in tenth place, but they've won five in a row. Just give me your kind of. Uh, big picture assessment on this season and where you think they could possibly go, if anywhere. They're just way, way too inconsistent. And Stani, I was actually at that game in Orlando uh, the other night when Draymond got kicked out and and they found a way to win and Steph hit it at the end. Uh, those last couple shots. In you know, this is just a team that has not been able to put any consistency together they can't seem to find their way and i don't see that changing as we get set here or whatever the postseason may be for them i mean they may well get out of that plan and they're certainly not afraid of minnesota or oklahoma city but this is not the kind of team that strikes fear into anybody's heart at the moment so i thought they'd be better than they were and I still think they're going to have a lot of major decisions to make over the summer. But as I watch them, not only now, but you look ahead into the future and the contract they have on the books, I don't see any kind of major fix on the horizon. And that's sad, obviously, for a variety of reasons for Warriors fans, but especially because Steph is still playing at the level he's playing at. Well, it's good to be talking to you again, Nick. And I'm, I'm sure Guru sends his best. I know he's looking forward to this. So, <laughs> uh, but I, I wanted to ask you about like the poster child for inconsistency this year with Golden State has been Andrew Wiggins. But oddly enough, and you saw it in Orlando, he might be their most consistent player during this this four or five game win streak. Do you think there's any correlation with Wiggins' recent performances and the absence of Jonathan Kaminga having missed these last few games? I mean, it could be, and when Wiggins has been at his best over the last couple of years there, he, he very clearly has been the second best player and the guy they've needed, and of course the best example of that is in that postseason run, run where they won the bonus title a couple of years ago. Uh, as far as Wiggins and Kaminga, I'm not watching – the same kind of night to night way as I was in the past, but just in in being around, I think that the key for for Wiggins is whatever's been going on off the floor. Uh, he hasn't been uh, seemingly carrying around what's been happening as much lately. It was like he came back the last time mm. and he got through it. And so, how they fit Kaminga into whatever happens. Uh, in the future here and what they decide to do with Wiggins and that contract, we'll see. Uh, but if the Warriors are going to be at their best, they need this Wiggins, obviously, but they need Kaminga to continue to grow in the way he's done at various points of this season. So there's got to be a balance there. And uh, I'm very curious to see what happens to Wiggins this summer because I just don't know if the fit is the same, and when you're not getting the type of, again, there's that word again, consistency from him especially, it might be time to move on and get off that deal. We're joined by Nick Friedel, Odyssey NBA Insider. Insider calls are brought to you by the all-new Hyundai 2024 Santa Fe, equipped for adventure with capable features like available H-Track all-wheel drive and standard third-row seating. Let's assume that the report about Clay Thompson before the season was correct, that the Warriors offered him two years, $48 million, 24 a year, and he declined. He's had an interesting season in that he's obviously gone to the bench. I think, I think it maybe took a minute, but he's, he's embraced it. What, what happens with Clay Thompson at the end of the year? And, and after he's kind of been a, a great soldier this year, 
Could the Warriors really offer him less than he declined at the be, you know at the off season last year? Uh, that would be a real, uh, real tough pill uh, for all involved to swallow. And Steiner, you've been around Clay longer than I was in my stretch covering the team, but this is a very, very proud guy, very proud. And uh, I think it it was r- very difficult for him to come off the bench and acknowledge he's just not the same player anymore. But if the Warriors and Mike Dunleavy and that staff come back to him over the summer and say, hey, Clay, (laughs) the deal that was there isn't there anymore. If you're Clay, as much as you have given everything to this team and you have built your legacy on on winning the titles and, and doing everything for the Warriors, I think there's a matter of personal pride that may kick in. And, and if they don't offer him at least that deal, uh, who knows what's going to end up happen, happening. Now, I say all that. Having talked to Clay and, and Joe Lacob over the years, Steiny, I would still be surprised if we're sitting here in a few months and Clay has gone somewhere else. Right. I think there's always a middle ground. And Joe Lacob has said repeatedly he wants Clay to be there forever. The relationship between those two specifically always has seemed to be very strong. So Clay knows what he represents uh, to the Bay. He knows he's going to have a, a statue outside Chase at some point down the line. And he always struck me as the type of guy who wanted to be in one place the same way Steph has said over and over. He wanted to be in one place. But if you're going to mess around with his money or his role just isn't going to be the same, everything is on the table. But if we were betting right now, I would still bet that Clay and the Warriors find that middle and he's back to start next year. Well, Nick, speaking of Joe Lacob, he has footed just colossal tax bills, really, each for the better part of the last half decade. And I'm sure it's not with his team being a 10 seed that's at the forefront of his mind. If they get to a first round series or if they flame out of the playing tournament, I mean, what kind of changes do you think Lacob is going to be open to? Does it start with Clay? Do you think it's Wiggins? I guess I'm just trying to figure out. You know the the avenue that the Warriors can go down to shake this thing up because if they end up losing in the playing tournament, they are a ten seed, and it doesn't feel feasible for them to just run it back like they did last year. Evan, I know it's the the point that everybody in the Bay is thinking about. I know you guys discuss it uh, every day when you can with the Warriors. And I, I'm listening still. <laughs> I'm here to tell you from a distance now. I'm not sure what the hell the Warriors do because when you have that Wiggins deal and it is not looking good at all, it's going to be tough to move off that. But as we've seen, certainly with the pool contract, you can always find a way. But after that, I, you know, Steph's on a, on a a mega max deal. Draymond just redid his deal. We talked about clay and we'll see how that plays out. Uh, at some point down the line, if Kaminga keeps playing like this, you're going to have to pay him big bucks. But the return isn't there anymore. It's just flatly that mm. the Warriors aren't good enough. And that is a really tough reality when you're used to competing for championships. The key to me, guys, and I think this has gotten lost in all the ups and downs of the last couple of years, Wiseman was supposed to bridge the gap. That pick was supposed to bridge the next era of the Warriors, and it did not happen. And I think they are just starting to feel the impact uh, of what's occurred by whiffing so badly on that pick. Now, there are a lot of other reasons why they're going to be struggling to to find their way here back up to the top. But when you put all those factors together, if you're Lacob and you have spent all this money and potentially you get knocked out in the play-in tournament, I don't know how you can feel good about running it back. And even more, I'm not sure the moves you can make to legitimately feel like you can get back to that upper echelon of the Western Conference. Because the reality is, for as fantastic as Steph is still playing, he's 36, and it is very rare for guys to play in their prime that much longer. So I think reality is starting to hit more and more for this group. And maybe they make one more run next year, but the, the reality is how much better off can they be? I, I just don't see it. 
anymore as far as title contention goes. Nick Friedell joining us on 95-7 The Game. He's our Odyssey NBA insider. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's assume something positive and that the Warriors somehow get out of the play-in. Who would be... Who would you give them their best shot against? Denver, Oklahoma City, or Minnesota? Minnesota. <laughs> Interesting. I, I do not believe in that team huh. at all. I know what they've done in the regular season. I know Ann Edwards is a hell of a player who's only getting better. I am not in any way believing that Minnesota, who has never really won anything, they had that one year with Tibbs and Jimmy Butler, they got to the playoffs. How you go from all right, well, we've never won anything at all to, yep, we're going to be right there in the Western Conference Finals. I think that team is ripe for a first-round upset. I don't believe that they're going to be able to find their way this quickly in games that matter the most. You could say the same thing about the Thunder. I just think Shea Gilgis-Alexander is unbelievable, and he is a guy who's only getting better in that star role in the middle of the country there for a team that not a lot of people know about still nationally. Denver, you don't want to mess with at all. To me, guys, that is the team to beat, not just in the West, but uh, in the NBA. They just won. They've got Jokic. He's going to win another MVP. They know what it takes to win in the finals now. I wouldn't want any piece of them if you're the Warriors or anyone else, but if the Warriors can get in through the play-in, and they can match themselves up with either the Thunder or the Timberwolves, and you have healthy Steph, focused Draymond, Wiggins playing at the level he's been at, you get Kaminga, and you start rolling through uh, top to bottom what they have, I'd like my chances in that series if I were the Warriors. Interesting. I- I'm also curious, Nick, what do you think the biggest choice that the Warriors are going to have to make this offseason is? I would think it would be what do you do with Wiggins' deal, but it ties back, Evan, into what we've been discussing with Clay. I mean, the biggest choice, if you, uh, you're you not moving off Steph, uh, it would be hard to move off Draymond just because for all of the hoopla off the floor and everything that's occurred this season, <laughs> if you take him off this team... Uh, I, I'm not sure who's going to do all the things that he does. If if you're talking about an, an emotional change and what it may take, maybe the answer is Clay. Yeah. What do you do if Clay doesn't like the money you're offering or if Clay doesn't like the role that is being presented to him moving forward? He has been such an incredible piece for this team for so long, but Times change, and if you're not putting up the same type of production that everybody's used to seeing, it can get really difficult. So I would think certainly from an emotional standpoint, it's the decision surrounding Clay. But again, there's too much history there not to think that whether it was Lakeup or Steph or Draymond, whomever it may be, if they can find the right price point that he wouldn't be back and find his role and and carve into it even more than what we've seen this year off the bench. Nick, appreciate it, my man. Good to hear from you. Always, guys. I appreciate you uh, having me on. I'll talk to you soon. All right. That was Odyssey NBA insider Nick Friedel. Insider calls brought to you by the Odyssey.